There is a new twist in the Casey Anthony case. The Florida mother who has pled not guilty to killing her two-year-old daughter Kaylee is out of money. And she wants taxpayers to pay her mounting legal bills. NBC's Kerry Sanders is in Orlando with the latest on this. Kerry, good morning. Well, good morning, Matt. Casey Anthony went to court asking the judge to declare she's indigent, that yes, she is out of money. But in the process of asking for financial help, it was revealed she spent $275,000 so far in her defense, a huge sum of money for a long unemployed 20-something. Casey Anthony back in court as her legal team tells the judge she's broke. Unemployed at least a year before her daughter went missing, it's long been a question asked on the Today Show several times. How was Casey paying for her legal dream team? Who's paying you? Well, the, the arrangements that I have with my client are confidential. Uh, what she has with her defense team, all of that is really of no, no one's concern. Thursday, at the judge's insistence, defense lawyer Jose Baez reluctantly revealed most of Casey's legal expenses, $200,000 worth, have been funded by ABC News. Uh, $200,000 came from uh, the, uh, a deal that was done by my client with uh, the American Broadcasting from where, I'm sorry? ABC. From ABC News? Yes. Bias says the money came from a deal ABC News made with Casey to license use of photos and home videos of her dead daughter. What did ABC get for their $200,000? Those were for licensing of photos and nothing else. In a statement, ABC News says in part, no use of the material was tied to any interview. But Orange County investigators say at the time the deal was made, they were also aware Casey was planning to do an interview with ABC News. That never happened as detectives took her into custody, eventually charging Casey with the murder of her two-year-old daughter. ABC is owned by Disney, the largest employer in Central Florida, which is home to Disney World. And word that a Disney business has effectively funded Casey's defense is troubling to some people here in Orlando. I think it's a little bit strange that Disney would put their money up against an accused child killer. It just seems a little bit strange that Disney would be in that kind of a business. Media companies buy pictures and, and these kind of things all the time, so I don't really find that it's improper or anything like that. Casey's defense team says it's unlikely there will be any new sources of money. Is there any book deal anywhere? No, sir. Is there any movie deal anywhere? No, sir. Is there any deal with any kind of commercialization whatsoever in connection with this case? No. High-profile Chicago legal scholar Andrea Lyon, DNA expert Linda Kinney Bodden, and the other defense lawyers say they're all now working for free. Still, the team is asking for state money to hire expert witnesses and investigators. Cheney Mason recently joined Casey's legal dream team. He says the cost so far is not that much. 275 is no money at all. Uh, you listen, you, know, you all may think it is that somebody was handed that, but a defense of a case like this normally costs in the millions. Millions. Ask the state how much they have spent. Prosecutors were asked that in court, but would not answer. Legal expert Kendall Coffey. Understandably, taxpayers may not want their dollars to go to help an allegedly homicidal mother. But unless experts and other necessary defense costs are funded, the reality is that this case could get thrown out later on by an appeals court. There's one other development today, which is Casey Anthony's 24th birthday. Investigators say that she befriended a female inmate in jail and passed that woman 50 notes. Those notes' contents have not been revealed. Investigators say they're not confessional, but that they will be useful to prosecutors. Matt, a trial is still more than a year away. All right, Carrie, Carrie Sanders in Orlando this morning. Carrie, thank you very much. Dan Abrams is NBC's chief legal analyst. Dan, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. So the defense has spent $275,000 at this point. Now Casey Anthony is out of money. She wants the taxpayers to fund the defense. What happens next? Well, what they really want is they want them to fund the expenses, right? The lawyers are saying effectively, we're going to deal with this in terms of our expenses. Pro bono. Exactly. What we need now, though, is to pay for all of the travel, 
and the other subpoenas and other defense expenses that come up, and she's out of money. And as a result, they're saying, look, this is the way that this works, particularly in a death penalty case, and we're entitled to it. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest with you. Taxpayers foot the bill for the defense of criminal uh, suspects all the time. I mean, through the public defender's program. But these are high-powered attorneys, so might it sit differently with the taxpayers? And, And that's what makes this tricky, is now those attorneys have to come forward and explain what they've done with that money already. So it's not just a question of whether Casey Anthony doesn't have any money. The question is, well, what happened to that $275,000? And the judge says, I want to hear a full accounting from the attorneys as to where that went. But as you mentioned, it is a potential death penalty case. So you have to imagine the state is going to agree with anything that allows the defendant to vigorously defend herself. No question. But when you're talking about the state paying for the defense, in particular, as you pointed out, with private counsel, there is essentially an organization that assesses whether the state should be paying for it. And that organization is saying, wait a sec, for example, we don't pay for private counsel's travel. You, you're going to fill out the same travel vouchers that every other public defender has to fill out. Which raises a question. It might be a simple question, but, but answer it. Why do high-powered lawyers like these lawyers work pro bono? Is it pure publicity? Because they get to be in Kerry Sanders' spot. That's uh, it. I mean, so, I mean, okay, it, it helps them in uh, the future. Look, they would say, they would say, to be fair, it's a responsibility. Yes, that they do cases for free on a regular basis and that every lawyer is expected to do it. But it just seems, lo and behold, that in high-profile cases, lawyers flock. Uh, to, to offering their services Real for free. Real quickly, as, as Kerry mentioned, the case, the, the trial is, is about a year away. From what we know right now in terms of physical evidence, yeah. not circumstantial evidence, not the way Casey Anthony behaved while her daughter was missing and up until her arrest, how strong is the prosecution's uh, case? You know, I, it seems they have a limited physical evidence case, but they would say, not a fair question the way you're asking it, they would say you have to look at the totality of the evidence. You can't just look at the physical evidence. You have to look but at all. Death penalty case, circumstantial evidence is going to be tougher to, to make fly. Uh, it, it possibly, particularly when the sentencing comes up, you're going to have to say, uh, what did they actually have? But you would hope that if she's convicted, that they believe that they've got proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Dan Abrams, as always, Dan, thanks Not very much.